All right, I'm right here right now with Austin Douglas from Ditch the Itch, Poison Ivy, Mosquito Control, and we're going to ask him some powerful questions of why did you choose to get into this instead of just mowing lawns or landscaping? And I want you to talk about all that, bro. Take this microphone. You got it. All right. So the main reason why I got into um, doing pesticide applications is because it takes a little bit more knowledge and education. There's a little bit larger uh, barrier of entry than just buying, you know, a lawnmower or a weed whacker so going out there licensed. doing it. Licensed. Licensed. What yep. are all your licenses and certifications so people know real quick? So I've been a pesticide, commercial pesticide applicator for 11 years, uh, certified in categories mosquitoes, turf grass, ornamentals, right of way applications. I'm a certified arborist. I'm tree risk assessment qualified. What? Um, a qualified plant health care technician through the TCIA, which is the Tree Care Industry Association, a tree care specialist. Uh, I'm I, in our, our ISA chapter here in Michigan. I'm oak wilt qualified, so I took an exam on that, and I intend to get plenty more qualifications. But essentially, when when you apply chemicals to properties, you have to know. Um, your insects, your life cycles, you have to know your chemistries, what sort of chemicals are you using. You have to know all the laws that come with this. I was actually just in Lansing yesterday. Um, I was just on the phone with a, a guy who works for me uh, this morning. We had a job reschedule and he's like, dude, I, I was on uh, online on YouTube and I saw that dish the itch. You were before this board, like a city board or something? Oh, it was uh, Michigan Senators. So this yeah, that was some high level stuff. You sent me the picture. Yeah, these senators uh, they were trying to change laws that affect pesticide application firms, and so yesterday I went out there to provide some testimony in opposition to what they were going to change. So it, it requires a lot more knowledge to to do the the applications versus just you know grabbing a weed whacker and and trimming some some weeds or or potentially you know even throwing down mulch right you need to have a little bit more advanced thought process of what's what you're doing and what's going to occur in the environment what's the after effects things like that so how did you this is kind of a personal question but how did you like without like survive and support yourself and your family while you're doing this deep dive education and getting all doing all the, the testing and the schooling and like I saw you bro pictures of you and talking about how deep you were studying and doing all these exams and building a clientele that's a little bit, I guess, higher barrier to entry than just going out and getting a bunch of landscape clients. You like you took the hard, the the route is like that's p paying off for you. Yeah, I uh, I started out working in a commercial nursery, mm. and so I was working there. I mean, during the springtime, you know, from the basically February to May, we were working probably eighty hours a week. We were putting in a lot of time. We had to plant a lot of trees, a lot of shrubs. And I was learning while I was there. I was learning about the ornamental side of things. You know, learning about what plants are what, how, what are they named, why are they named that, uh, what insects affect them, what diseases affect them, how do you treat them. So I, it was a, it was pretty much like hands-on learning while I was making money, paying for all of my bills. And then uh, I, and during the summer, I was working for the only poison ivy control company in the state um, of Michigan. Of Michigan and. I went, got my license, became certified, started working for them. I loved it. So in the summers, I would go work there. And then in the fall, winter, and spring, I would go work at the commercial nursery. Uh, from that point, I was you know, pretty much just uh, going through that cycle until I basically said, I need to step up my game. I want to make more money. I want to do more things. And so I'd ask that company, hey, you know, I, I would love to purchase a franchise. And uh, I wasn't able to purchase a franchise. So I waited another four years working at that company. I wasn't presented an opportunity. I left and started my own thing. And then from there, you know, I knew how to do what I'd been doing for the last few years, but I just still had this burning desire to learn more. I wanted to know more. I wanted to separate myself and put myself in a new tier, a new category of business. And as soon as the customer hears this guy talk, I mean, we, we were on a job site recently, we were on the same job site, and you were showing me like little tiny micro bugs inside of like leaves. Boxwood leaf miner, yeah. So he knows all the stuff, bro. And um, and when you look at those bugs in that instance, when I crack open a leaf and show you that leaf miner, your mind's blown because you're like, how did you know that? How did you know that was in there? And then you as a client or, or you know, as your clients might see you, they're going to be like, how did you know that? 
right? You just see this plant, you see the symptoms, you understand what's going on, and then you can visually show them what's going on. You can see these little bugs wiggling around in this leaf. So when you walk up on a customer's property and let's say they got, no, you just closed a five figure. A five figure mosquito job. And so he walks on properties and you're like, yes, I can see you have a monoculture with all these Colorado species and there's rhizophyll and needle cast disease and that's why, <laughs> and we have to. Uh, maybe. In, in that situation on their property, they have uh, 110 acres. Uh, there's a three and a half mile trail system that goes through this woods that the the gentleman wants to you know ensure that when he walks his trails he's not getting tore up by mosquitoes. Totally understandable, and uh, you know I while walking the woods I noticed that his woods population was a lot of red oak, and so another issue for me is oak wilt, and oak wilt is extremely extremely severe when it comes to red oak trees, and so I told him. You know, as an added benefit of having us on your property. Oak wilt is? Oak wilt is a fungal disease that infects oak trees and kills them. And then it spreads through beetles that go to a fungal mat that it basically exposes itself the following year. And it also transmits through roots. Because if you don't know this, certain trees graft their roots together. And they will share information, nutrients, water, everything. And th in that evolution, they also share diseases, which is a... Not such a good thing, but, you know, we're learning how to manage that. So I told him, you know, as an added benefit of having us on your property as your mosquito provider, we're going to be able to monitor your forest for oak wilt, which could potentially devastate. It could kill thousands of trees. And so, you know, they saw, oh, they saw the value. Why did the mic disconnect all of a sudden? Check, check. I hope we're still recording. Maybe the battery died. So anyways, we're going to have him on the podcast, the Untrapped Podcast. So that was just a sneak peek. I'm going to put links in the description to videos that I've done with him, previous podcasts, and listen to the Untrapped podcast on Apple and Spotify, and I'll put all the links to find him. And this is just a prelude to what you're going to learn from Austin Douglas' Ditch the Itch, bro. It'll be fun. Hope to see you there. All right. I'm ending the video now because the mic disconnected.